Welcome back. A new administration in the White House bringing new life to Wall Street in his first exclusive business interview since the election. President Trump spoke to me about the positive changes to markets since the start of his term. Listen. When we look at all that we've done uh, from the standpoint of business, look at econo look at the optimism charts, look at manufacturers, 93%, the highest it's ever been, the optimism of manufacturers. Look well, at the, the sentiment has changed. We have never, ever had the optimism that we have now over the last 90 days or since the Trump election. So, and you see the stock market. I mean, we've picked up $3 trillion in value. Joining us right now is the former Philadelphia Federal Reserve President, Charles Plasser. Uh, uh, Charles, great to see you. Thank you so much for joining us. Good to be with you, Maria. So talk to us about the policies uh, and the anticipated policies and its impact on the economy. Do you think things are getting better? Well, I think if you look, as, as, as the president suggested, if you look at optimism and sort of forward-looking indicators in the marketplace, whether it be the stock market or other things, things have clearly improved. Uh, but they're really about expectations of the future. I think the real test is going to be is whether uh, the policies that the Republicans and the president have, have advocated that the, that the public seems to think will advance the economy uh, actually come to pass and in what form. And I think that remains to be seen. I'll be looking at sort of statistics, early statistics like business investment. Business investment is something that's been weak throughout this recovery, partly because of lack of optimism about the future. So let's, I'm, I'm hoping to see the numbers begin to verify some of this, uh, some of these expectations and this optimism. Yeah, I mean, I, I think you make the right point, and that is the, the business sector. I feel like that's where the recession has been. Why have businesses been sitting on cash, unwilling to put it to work and hire new workers? Well, I think it varies a little bit from business to business, but the, the, the argument has been for a long time that they were uh, uncertain about the future of the country, uncertain about policies, uncertainty about uh, regulations, about tax reform and things. And so I think they've been sitting and trying to wait uh, to know where to put their money and where it will be of most value. And I think that's been part of the, part of the problem, certainly. And I think that, the, that, that Trump and the Republicans and their efforts to either uh, get control of government regulation, either roll it back or at least rein it in a bit, uh, as well as tax reform are two of the biggest issues that uh, could have some positive effects for the economy. And, and that's really what we've been talking about, the executive orders on rolling back regulations. You know, Steve Schwarzman was with us yesterday, the head of the Blackstone Group. He said some projects take 10 to 15 years to actually get done. No one's going to commit capital if they think they're in, the, in for this long bureaucratic process with all of the rules and regulations. Exactly. That's exactly right. And, and they've got to commit money now for this sort of thing. And so they're, the fact they're uncertain and they're worried about about bureaucracy and regulations and whether, what the tax rates are going to be, how much money they can earn from various projects. You need to have, take, be able to take a stand on some of those things to commit the, the billions and millions of dollars that firms have to to invest in, in, in the future. I want to ask you about the, the, the story on interest rates, but first, let me get your take on what the markets are expecting here. We've been having a debate this morning about tax reform uh, tied to health care reform. The president uh, yesterday sat down with me for that exclusive interview and said he has to do health care first. So they're continuing to negotiate a health care package. This morning, Mark Meadows, the head of the Freedom Caucus, is on the wires saying we're getting close in the House. We could have something. So the negotiation is going on. Sir, if we don't get something done, do you think we see a major sell-off because people are saying, look, they're going to have just as big a fight on tax reform as they had on health care. Maria, I've learned a, lot, I learned a long time ago not to predict what the stock market's going to do. But, but I, I do know, I do think that the issue about whether you do tax reform or whether you do health care reform first um, is, a, is a political choice. It's not a fundamental economic issue, I don't think. So I think that uh, we'll have to see how they choose to play it out and play the votes. But clearly for the economy as a whole, I'm just pure economics now, I'm not, I'm not making a value judgment about what's more important, but from a pure economy standpoint, tax reform I think is incredibly important to uh, success going forward. And, yeah, for sure. Uh, that, and that, that's got to be the key, uh, and it's true, all these other issues are also important in different ways, but I think tax reform is the most important thing that uh, the business sector is going to be looking for 
in terms of measures of success and also measures of realizations of that optimism that people seem to have. Charles, Fed Chair Janet Yellen is setting the stage for a shift in monetary policy, obviously saying that the longstanding stimulative monetary policy would be coming to an end. Is the economy ready to move away from that policy right now? Well, I, yes, I think it has. I think it has been for some time. I, I, I'm actually glad to hear Janet sort of uh, uh, expressing those views. I mean, the Fed, the Fed has had, so to speak, the pedal to the metal for, for eight years. And to think that keeping the pedal to the metal for another eight years is going to help a whole lot seems to be uh, a fantasy, I think, yeah, at this but point. What, so I'm I think what I'm really getting at, Charles, is the fact that the economy is slow. We just had a jobs number last week at 98,000, weaker than expected. We had a GDP that continues to show 2% growth at best. Do you worry that as the Fed is raising interest rates, it's going to just wipe out any economic traction that we've been getting? Uh, I don't think it will. I, th I think that the, the, the reason the economy is slow has little to do with, um, with monetary policy or be, uh, uh, of it being either too restrictive or too stimulative at some point. As I mentioned earlier, I think the key to this is confidence. The key to this is tax reform. The key to this is raising productivity in this country. I mean, one of the things that we overlook is for the last six years, um, productivity in this country has been below 1%. And we can't grow fast without productivity growth. That's the engine of our growth. It's the engine of, our, of raising living standards. And productivity growth has been suffering. And we need to focus, whether it be the infrastructure plan, whether it be tax plans, or if we want to get real wages growing, we have to figure out policies that are going to promote greater productivity. That's All where right. the puzzle is. It's not, it's not in monetary policy. Okay. Charles, great to have you on the program this morning. Thanks so much. Thank you, Maria. Charles Plosser joining us, former president of the Philadelphia Federal Reserve.